Tessa Frink, Michigan State University. Hi, uh, Tessa, thanks for being with us in Novos TV. It's a pleasure having you here. Hello, thanks, so thanks for having me. It's been gr great to be invited. We are talking uh, again about uh, these three Ayatlas, uh, AB Loeb continues with uh, some messages. Uh, what is the difference between three Ayatlas and Chuai Borisov, Wani, Wanai, uh, Omamua? What is the difference uh, between them? Right, so three Ayatlas is um, the difference between three Ayatlas and uh, one Ayat Muamua is that. What I Muamua did not exhibit typical uh, comet outgassing and experienced uh, non gravitational accelerations due to um, gases being trapped in am amorphous ice and us not being able to see some of those outgassings. And um, conversely, to I uh, Borisov and Thrai Atlas, they show our typical, the typical comet outgassing with. Um, volatile materials and but one thing that differentiates um Thray atlas from tui borisov is the um the ratio of outgassing of different volatiles um Thray atlas shows um way more like outgassing of co2 than we saw with tui borisov so it is definitely a unique uh interstellar object Talking about uh, three Ayatlas, uh, I would like to ask you about the uh, speed. Uh, what about uh, its speed and how does it compare to other interstellar objects? Right. So, uh, three Ayatlas was much is ha, was coming in from infinity at much higher high rate of speed. So we saw for um, one I am a Muamua with only. 26 kilometers per second and a little bit faster or two I Borisov was at 32 kilometers per second but almost double that speed was uh, three I Atlas with almost um, 60 kilometers per second so um, we're seeing that three I Atlas is, has a much greater hyperbolic velocity and uh, Tessa what do we know about the nucleus of three Ayatlas, its size, density, its shape, uh, what do we know about the, the nucleus of three Ayatlas? So what we know about the nucleus is we will be, um, it's the upper limit on this is about um, I believe it's 11 kilometers, but it could be um, different. But we will see more of those nucleus features as it um, as it has made its closest approach with the sun already. We're going to be able to see a lot more, a lot closer to the nucleus once all of the those materials from the surface blow off. We'll be able to see um, the the three atlas much brighter and we'll be able to see deeper down into the nucleus so we'll be learning more and more in the next couple of weeks or months um, we do know that the temp surface temperature of about 150 kilometers which indicates um, a number of thermal properties of the of three atlas um, and as far as like um, its shape we're not really sure what what it looks like the nucleus itself we are talking about the speed, uh, we are talking about the nucleus. Uh, what about the evolutionary history of this comet? Uh, what do we know about it? Yeah, so we know that Thray Atlas has been traveling through um, interstellar medium for a really long time, upper, with upper limits up to um, 11 million year, billion years. Um, so we know that Thray Atlas has been through a lot coming on its way to our system and um, a lot of the surface of Thray Atlas has been processed over that time so we can tell how long approximately how long Thray Atlas has been being processed by like um, galactic cosmic rays or been processed by um, interstellar dust and all of that stuff so we can we can tell that um, based on how much the surface of the atlas has been processed by got a cosmic rays we can tell sort of how how long it's been traveling and how long it it's taken to get to us um in the solar system uh, tisa what have we learned about the uh, atlas what are we learning about the uh, three atlas and how could help us to intercept another interstellar objects in the in the future 
Yeah, so we've learned a lot in the past couple of months and we've, a lot of astronomers, uh, scientists have been thinking about how we could have intercepted 3 I Atlas with a spacecraft, um, like launching from here on Earth or launching from Mars itself, or just turning one of our um, current spacecraft probes just to look at it. Um, but um, unfortunately, because of 3 Atlas coming in at such high rate of speed and um, and the date at which we discovered it uh, limited our possibilities of really doing direct imaging with a spacecraft uh, or doing any kind of direct imaging through flyby. So in, if we're able to detect uh, a future interstellar object much earlier on, maybe when it's um, much farther past where we found Thrai Atlas, which was n near Jupiter, if we could detect the interstellar object much earlier, we can, uh, and if we have some kind of system set up where we can turn our spacecrafts to look at Thrai Atlas, or even possibly um, utilize uh, projects that are in the works right now, like the um, ESA is a comet interceptor. If we can get things like that going, we can have a better plan for when our um, future interstellar objects come through our system. We are talking a lot about the three Ayadlas. Uh, how many interstellar visitors are we, are we seeing in, in this decade? Uh, how many three Ayadlas are we seeing in the, in the future? Right, so we've only seen three so far, and that's really makes this kind of object pretty rare but honestly I think we are just currently limited by our technology in that if if we have um, like our the Vera Rubin uh, telescope that just came online not long ago and we're gonna be having Nancy Grace Roman telescope come up eventually next year so we're hoping to at least see one one interstellar, uh, one to ten inter new interstellar objects each year, considering the new technology that's coming online. Um, but we, yeah, we are hopeful that we're seeing at least one more interstellar object each year. Well, uh, waiting for more information about uh, Thira Yadlas. This is a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for Thank having me. Thank you.